So you will have to an option of Google Web Toolkit that it provides you APIs for a development and that could be deployed over Google App Engine that would have a, a Google large cloud platform infrastructure to work on. So this Google App Engine architecture we discussed in the previous class we discussed about Hadoop Google architecture. And we, before that, we discussed Google content management, how it manages. We discussed about Google file system in previous class. Now we are going to discuss about new kind of cloud architecture, which is more related towards uh, infrastructure as a service. In Google uh, content management that we discussed in the previous class, it belongs to platform as a service. Now the difference is that in Eucalyptus, it is more inclined towards infrastructure as a service. So in Google, you get the development environment. In Eucalyptus, you'll get the administrative environment for the infrastructure. Both are kind of middlewares or the software that actually integrates multiple infrastructure means machines together through some libraries or operating systems. So previous class we discussed about platform as a service. Now we are going to discuss about Eucalyptus, which is infrastructure as a service. Eucalyptus cloud is highly scalable because it is working since uh, from the core machine itself. From OS level, it is working. So it is very, very highly scalable. Then which are the component? So there, there are six basic components that we are going to discuss. What are these? These are basically spread it out in three separate levels. So first, we'll discuss about cloud level. What does cloud level do? Cloud level is basically comprised of two components, and that uses many users and transactions between the components. And these are component are defined to be cloud controller (CLC). Scalable object storage as well as then you have the cluster level control. In this cluster level control, various availability of zones could be uh, seen. That um, the cluster one, cluster two, cluster three. So these cluster are being managed at this cluster level. So the cloud level manages this cluster level. And cluster level manages the node level. So cluster level, what feature it do? It provides you cluster controller. It provides you storage controller. It provides you VMware broker, and it's optional. What cloud controller do? Cloud controller basically controls all the clusters. A scalable object storage do what? It controls cluster level storage controller. And what cluster controller do? Cluster controller do basic functionality to control the cluster nodes. And storage controller do storage at basic uh, node level. Then what is node level? Node level basically the most fundamental atomic level where machines are there. And these are having many components. And each have few users to be using and there are transactions could be possible with uh, that machine itself and distributed cloud architecture this is very flexible and it, it supports the business uh, at any size means you can add on the node level and that your business or that infrastructure keeps on increasing 
so that's the node controller which actually controls single node so you can go and install node controller in each each machine that you are adding as new and you have to configure the cluster level and cloud level and node level is being installed so with the help of node controller then this is the architecture that cloud eucalyptus cloud have so various nodes are there node 1 node 2 node 3 they are running with node controller and see they are having virtual machines and above that there is cluster which actually controlling the cluster with multiple nodes so cluster controller cc ha has various type of cluster controlling then a storage controller is there then vm where broker is there there are the cloud controllers there that actually controls all the clusters in that a scalable object storage which controls storage systems then you have the UI user interface or APIs. And in this UI and APIs, it basically manages the console. And console means it could have commands to operate with. And that helps you do the uh, compatibility with Amazon. So Eucalyptus is compatible with Amazon Web Service. We are going to discuss this eucalyptus in detail in next chapter. Next, we'll see the basics of architecture of Ruby on Rails. The web application basically develops in some uh, environment that is we can have integrated development environment and thereafter it could be pushed to some server and a scalable server or platform so this ruby on rails basically is an uh, is an development environment which kind of development environment it support it supports model view controller environment and this is very popular with agile development that helps conventional and that helps to do the configuration management and this Ruby on Rail basically uses model view control that we are going to discuss just now. So how it manages? So it manages like browser or client or that Android is asking some request to the web server. Then what web server do? Web server send it to dispatcher. Dispatcher do what? dispatcher send it to load to the controller according to load balancing and load balance that controller would do what crude operation create read update and delete from active record whatever database is there it will ask for some data or edit some data or delete some data the response come to the controller then controller sends this request response to the action view or action web service or action mailer so these things action view will do the rendering process if it shows then action web service do the delegation to the other web service and action mailer would do the delivery to the directly to the customer or client then action view basically do the uh, display and web service action web service do the respond to the other redirection of to the other web service so these are the different type of uh, result that a client can get uh, response that a client can get can get so i hope this architecture would be uh, simple enough so request is in the form of http rss or soap thereafter response is in terms of access html css js image or xml responses 
and in the database part you basically deal with mysql or the regular sql code then what is ruby on rail how it works it works on restful architecture what is full form of restful representational state transfer protocol so that restful is we are going to discuss in uh, next chapter this restful is an alternative way of web service usage that uses that one form is soap based or wsdl based web service and there is another form which is representational state transfer so there are two ways of uh, doing web services then what we want to discuss we want to discuss that work on the http protocol and restful actually works restful web services works on http platform and there are four basic operations what are these four basic operation create read update and delete crude that is in the uh, this part so this is having crude so it can create read update or delete then thereafter restful basically uses when it is required to be stateless then limited bandwidth is required for this and no overhead of soap means xml coding in that soap is basically written on xml and xml would be read so that xml should be sent out over the packets so the extra bandwidth is not required in such case and it is basically stateless means we are will discuss this whole restful topic in the next chapter when service provider is basically and service user has the complete information of the operation so it is not required to have a this actually provides you the uh, complete information of operation operation means the coding that is been done inside the web service and that operation is basically the procedure you can assume that is exposed to the internet that is we can say remote procedure calling so that procedure is have containing the business logic which is exposed as to the internet is said to be operations and that operation would have written with the a business logic code and that is been having updated and that information is there with the uh, client and provider both so ruby on rails mvc we'll see model view controller so model view controller is a separate business logic from separate business logic from html view so what does this mean this means that mvc actually have two different part one is view viewing purpose means display purpose and one is business logic and business logic works with database so the architectural pattern is basically improved in terms of maintainability of that application if there is some fault in the sql code you just need to worry about the sql code if there is fault in the database server then you have to worry only about database server if there is a fault in front end or application view part or that display part html part jss part so you just need to worry about that and when you there is a problem with business logic you have to worry about that business logic part so these are the three basic components and how they are been named they are been named as model view and controller what is model model basically contains business logic and how it has been done written code it is based upon the some rules and manipulated data should be there models are being represented in terms of information in the database it manages interaction with database this model basically represent the information in the database and it fetches or it inserts 
the updates the database with this with the help of this business logic means hard code programming has been done in the model part and that actually represent how the information is been stored and fetched from the database and it basically interacts with database then viewing part it's a front end application which is like an interface that is having html files embedded with some ruby codes like html pages are there pdf could be there in front xml could be there rss could be there so this is for the display purpose in the form of view and it's a front end output thereafter controller controller basically interacts in between model and view so this is how this controller is been interacting with with the request and response so business logic is written over uh, uh, here in the controller part model part and that the database has been uh, requested and then display would be there so this uh, controller basically interacts with model and view and then the incoming request is been processed by the controller incoming request is been processed by the controller and then controller would process the data means it request the uh, database and fetches the database arranges that and passes it to the uh, view part means this part and it presents to the uh, user so these are the uh, three com three components model view and controller so this is mvc on this mvc ruby on rail works this is all about the advanced google architectures or this is all about the architectures cloud architectures of level on the world so we discuss about web 2.0 we discuss about how different um, mashups could be done in the web 2.0 with the help of different services working together and they can provide it as mashup and we have discussed about rss feed that you can register and get notified information then we discuss about basics of hadoop that hadoop distributed file system map reduce we had discussed so hadoop distributed file system we discuss about name node data node we discuss about how secondary name node would be the part and they could work with data node as a slave and after we discussed about details of name node data node block replication we discussed we discussed about map reduce what features and functions are been given by the hadoop framework and what features and function we have to write in the hadoop to map reduce code there after we discuss a small example of word count very famous example then we discuss about the storm the storm is basically real time analytic system which is similar to batch processing analytic system of hadoop and in this it is having topologies means the graphs it created with spout and bolts so we discuss about streams real time streams are there too much tweets are been coming too much sensor data has been coming so how they are been processed with the help of topology been created which is equivalent to map reduce then spouts are basically the stream creation part of uh, the storm and bolt is the uh, processing unit of uh, the whole uh, storm so spout transfers emits some streams and bolt start doing processing and there's google file system google file system basically have the how the large files are been broken into 64 megabyte file size then we discuss about how google content management works they have different components like google cloud platform google, google load balancer google cloud dns static content are in the cloud storage dynamic content are in the 
cloud sql in and this is the architecture that we discussed then then we we also discuss about hadoop in inside the cloud platform how hadoop can be process how hadoop map reduce can be worked out then web applications how web application works and deployed over google app engine and how they works like google load balancer transfers load to app engine then cloud storage cloud sql memory cache mem cache task queuing we discussed and then we discussed about how it has been created with the google web toolkit and been deployed and debugged over the google cloud platform then we discussed about eucalyptus cloud with the cloud level cluster level and node level so cloud level means the topmost administrative level that could have two component cloud controller and storage object store iske liye bas object storage then cluster level means the ground level which actually have a cluster and cluster controller manages various nodes and inside those nodes storage controller manage the storage and vm broker is there which is an optional and there is node controller is there this is the architecture first node controller which is having virtual machines then cluster controller then storage controller on the cluster and thereafter the cloud controller basically controls different clusters scalable is object storage controls storage in the various clusters then user interface and api that is compatible with the amazon and other web services so we'll discuss this eucalyptus in detail in next chapter then we discuss about architecture of ruby on rails that is having the model view controller so the client request dispatcher dispatcher request goes to controller controller request goes to action view after being processed from the active records of database then controller transfers the display to the action view and client get the response the it is based upon restful architecture that we are going to discuss in next part there's three operations like create read update and delete then restful as basically stateless protocol which equal less bandwidth and this is separate from the soap and soap and wsdl based web services the model view controller we discussed that the business logic in the model and you write various codes that interact with the database and which manages database and then view is the front end which displays the file html based on html or something display like that then various formats are there which is having html pdf xml rss would be there and various controllers is there that actually interact with model and view could be there so this controller is basically processing the model and which actually discusses with uh, the model and process some fetches some data from the that processes the in input request and that sends the output to the uh, to the action view and controller is in between the model and view so request comes to the controller then it transfer is to it to the model and model do the processing with the database and then transfer the request back to the Respond as a response to the controller. And controller transfers the data, output data, and results to the view as a response. And this view will do the final response and HTML page encryption with all these things, and then send it to the client. In next class, we'll discuss about service-oriented architecture and grid. and cloud computing how they are being related how these 
services are being involved in interacting with and the, what is difference between grid computing and cloud computing architecture so any question till now about any architecture that we discussed anything that you want to discuss about project good morning sir hi uh, uh, sir uh, i was just asking like uh, our our group is uh, planning to make a project on uh, real time uh, sentiment analysis of financial news and tweets and how uh, such i mean uh, how such tweets actually affect the stock prices or uh, even the crypto prices is it so, a good project okay sir like uh, um, we have seen that most, there are people whose uh, tweets can change the prices of cryptos so yes. if we like uh, make a live uh, sentiment analysis model uh, which will uh, also at one hand it will uh, read the tweets and uh, make improve their model improve the ml model and also uh, give prediction based on past trend model uh, it's a good project so what you have to do you have to do this project and show the input and output and this is all related to something cloud computing platform so you also discuss about the cloud computing platform and this is a very good project but that the duration that you require it's small as compared to what you are having vision so just think in the feasible mode that what are the possible features or use case that you can develop before the before this end semester so that we'll finish this project in the semester itself so think for the use cases that are feasible to be developed in these few months and then you can write about these use cases and well as the technology that you use for cloud computing that would be enough for this course project okay sir okay Thank and you, sir. thanks anything else any other query by any or anyone else want to discuss about their project so that i can gu guide you initial level so it will help you do the direction and orientation for the semester and you'll have save with some time okay. yes ashwi have you decided that a spark based Uh, that project um so actually we were thinking of uh, going ahead with the uh, speech analytics in either um hadoop or uh, spark so And which so uh, one paper research paper that we saw uh, in spark using a uh, graph uh, yes. graphics and yes. ml library so we are reading that uh, we are trying to see how we can uh, reform and um you know uh, add more to uh, the techniques they have already used yes so think about that uh, how the new technique could be added with along with the older technique so that basically new innovative project that we are dealing with this graphics and machine learning libraries with this spark so nice. they they are missing with many algorithms that are good for data science yes data science we can think easily perform in spark or hadoop uh, yes but um, i didn't get much data about speech analytics so that's why we are a bit confused that we want to yes. do speech analytics uh, uh -huh. but uh, there's a lot of data regarding uh, um, data analysis but not yes. regarding speech analysis yes. so we can think and build some uh, api for that some code work for the speech analytics that, right that that is a good direction 
so what uh, i'll propose that ontology analysis means different words are there how they are being connected to words each other so that could be one thing that uh, could be looked on that uh, there's ontology means a science which is very old science which deals with how this a certain being thing is there in this world mm -hmm. like uh, the lion and deer all are the kind of animals so these are animal kingdoms like flowers like rose so rose is a kind of flower so this rose is a flower so these are connected like this so studying this concept would actually also very good for data science for all of you means anybody want to study about this ontologies ontology study so they can go for that yes so we studied it in yes. our previous semesters previous semesters yeah so it's good direction means what happens with speech analysis it requires a specific uh, expertise if you have that expertise with speech then only you can move forward with that and learning that speech expertise it takes time which is out of bound of this coursework thank you and so this, should we proceed with that or should we change our plan like you can work on ontologies so ontology mm -hmm. if you had already worked so you can keep on moving focused and keep on doing expertise in single thing so once you keep on working on your previous project moving towards new project and continuing the, your older project again so you will get start getting expertise and getting connected with other technologies as well with that expertise so that would be more productive instead you will think you will go for a speech or you will go for some other uh, like bioinformatics is also there like chemical informatics is also there if you move your direction then it will take too much time for you mm -hmm. to move and then older expertise of yours would not be counted so okay. we are intended to do in depth study so okay. in depth so be expert in cloud be expert with nature language processing and then how this cloud platform like is park could be helpful with nature language processing so, yeah so i think you have expertise with ontology and nature language processing so you can move an lp with the spark that would right. be more productive okay sir. so okay. we'll try to do an lp uh, in spark yes. okay thank you thanks so banu have you this you are saying something okay so now uh, we'll meet in the next class thanks all of you any still any doubt or any discussion you can mail me any time okay see you bye in the next class sir uh, yes could you yes. give me a reference for this course because seem like all theoretical uh means which type of this topics uh like which uh, topics there is so much of theory right sir we discussed about the google yeah. services and now we're thinking about the ruby and everything yes so, so there are, there are many. yes so in the this in this website in the end there are various in my website in this content of this cloud computing in the course there's lots of reference uh, is there so what happens this uh, ruby on rails that we discussed about the theory so you can go always go on this website of ruby on rails that uh, i'm sharing the link so in this link you can go and have they have various videos and they have various tutorials so if you are interested for that you can always go inside this and use its api and use its guide how to use this api and then you can have the the starting I, i'm just introduced with introduced you with this ruby on rails so this is also saying this uh, in the uh, api you will have this 
model view controller. So you have model layer, you have controller layer, and view layer. So you, these are having various codes or so, so. Yes, sir, thank you. 